Hi, uh, I'm Hoki. Today is Thursday, July 5th, and uh, 2018. This is my knitting journal, and I am recording after two weeks almost. And I'm so happy to be here with you again. And I didn't have a lot to tell you last week, so I didn't record, but... And I don't think I have a lot more to say this week, but I was missing you all, and your comments always make me happy every week, so I thought, okay, I'm going to record a new journal. I don't have a lot to say about knitting, so it's going to be a shorter knitting section at the beginning, and then there's going to be a bit of a longer sewing section at the end but I will let you know when I'm going to talk about sewing and after that mark I'm not going to talk about knitting anymore so if you are not interested in the sewing part you can just skip that and I'll see you when I record my journal again this week I have a new pattern release it's the feature pattern for the week it's my new a uh, pattern for the indigo leaves socks and I published this last week and they've done really well ever since I hope if any of you is making them I hope you are enjoying them these socks have a panel down the front that has a leaf motif and two tiny cables and this motif is really easy to memorize, so after you've done a couple of repeats, you don't really need to look at the charts so often. And I remember these socks being very relaxing, and also they are designed for heavier weight yarn. These are for DK weight yarn or heavy sport, so they grow super fast, <clears throat> and they are very cozy. I haven't been wearing these so that I could show them to you here in the journal and also because I think I'm going to give this to a very good friend whose birthday is uh, this weekend and since it's so cold here in Argentina right now, at least in Buenos Aires it is, um, I think she will enjoy having a pair of handmade socks to get her through the winter. Yes. Um, so what can I say about these socks? Uh, they are work from the cuff down and they have a heel flap. And I've talked about this several times. This is my favorite way to construct a sock. Um, I think that this, for me, for my uh, foot or feet, is the best fitting uh, heel. I don't find that it's slower than other heel methods and I love the reinforced heel flap because it makes my socks very very sturdy and they stay on my feet very well. I have never my my socks never come off and I I don't I wear them without shoes here at home a lot and they never ever come off. So I really like to make my socks with my heel flap. For my size I have a I would say it's a large women's foot, so my shoe size for US is 9, for European is 40-ish, uh, and I don't have small ankles, I have medium to large ankles, and my size only requires 48 stitches on 3 millimeter needles, so they are very very quick. and. I had a lot of fun making this. So I'm considering casting on for a second pair since I'm probably going to give this away. And I know that I asked this on Instagram when I uh, published this, but if you'd be interested in having a knit along, I'd be very happy to host a special sock knit along. I It's the first year that I have a couple or a few sock patterns uh, published already. I think I have four different sock patterns. Um, this is probably my fourth. Let's see, so cables down the back. Um, 
the beach grass socks, the two color socks, and the indigo leaves. I think, I don't think I have any other sock patterns yet. <laughs> so I'm thinking of doing a small uh, sock knit along in my group on Ravelry. And I have several prizes here at home that I can send you guys. And yes, yeah, so it will be very relaxed. You know me, I don't like rules, but if you're interested in having a knit along for any of those sock patterns, please leave a comment here in YouTube and I will open up a thread if I see that a bunch of people are interested. <laughs> and yes, so that's the feature pattern of the week, um, Indigo Leaves Sock and if you are interested in the yarn that I use and you haven't seen previous episodes where I mention it this is Madeline Tosh uh, work sock it's um, they have it labeled I think as a heavy fingering but it's definitely not this is a heavy sport yarn and yes um, I don't think you can make any fingering weight patterns with this yarn uh, I would say it's more like a heavy sport or a DK. And the skeins are 200 grams, so one skein is plenty to make a pair of indigo leaves socks. So, yeah, so next I want to show you something that I never published is this coat that I'm wearing. Because um, I don't have any finished objects to show you. I had already showed you the socks before. So I'm wearing a coat that was going to become a pattern at some point and then I don't know what happened. I never I never wrote it down but um, and I don't think I even showed a finished photo of uh, it on Ravelry. You know it was always there we go. There was always it was always a work in progress. And um, I don't know, I adore this cardigan coat. Sorry that my floor is so noisy. I, I really, really adore it. And I don't know that I can write the pattern now because I, 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 I think the problem was that I didn't take notes as I was knitting. I was very um, relaxed and enjoying the moment while I was knitting this coat and I thought I was going to remember everything that I was making and I don't and so I don't think it's going to become a pattern but I love it it it's boho style and so let me tell you about the yarn a couple of years ago I visited Malabrigo factory where they dye all their yarn in Uruguay and they had just released this yarn that is called Caracol. And the best color where you can appreciate Caracol's features is here in the white. Caracol is like a thick and thin yarn or one ply of thick and thin merino. And then it's plied together with another strand of, of uh, merino and some of the colors have a black binding, like the white and the magenta, you can see it has the black binding. And then other colors have a white thread that has been dyed in the same color as the thick and thin yarn. So in this case, you cannot see the ply unless you really pay attention. It's here. And then here in this color you can you can see it very well. And I'm not used to working with this yarn, with this kind of yarn. Uh, this is a style of yarn that people use it a lot here in Argentina, I think. Um, these uh, people make a lot of these handmade looking uh, artisan made coats. And I didn't used to I didn't use it a lot. I love it. It's not that I don't like it. I just never really thought what to make. And I think that because 
when I was able to get this yarn from the stores here in Argentina, it was not trendy to wear boxy cardigans or boxy sweaters. So I was more interested in something more tailored looking or more refined. And now, um, yes, you can see a lot of these garments at the stores and fashion trends have, you know, you see boxy shape, shapes everywhere. So <clears throat> when I brought this yarn home from the mill, I had brought all these colors that you can see here. And I was thinking of making a throw for our TV couch. And then I realized that I compared the, what I had to, I compared the size that I could make, that I could get out of the amount of yarn that I had. I compared it to the throw that we currently have on our couch. And I realized that I didn't have enough to make something that big and I I thought if that if I made something smaller we would just there would be something missing <laughs> we wouldn't wear it we wouldn't use it so much so then I thought why don't I make a blanket coat and I and I don't think that I would have been brave enough to buy this yarn and these colors for a cardigan or a coat unless I already had them home for a different kind of project. So I'm really happy I did this. This is a boxy, my traditional boxy construction. As you can see, there are some short rows here. There's some garter stitch. And then I did some slip stitch. Um, the transition between colors has some slip stitches. So some of the stitches are in the old color, like white, and then some of the stitches are in the new color. The colors that I used are were natural. This color with the purple and the green here is called Sarsamora, with a Z. Sarsamora. Um, this purpley dark gray here which became sort of like my main color. This is um, Pearl 10. And then this color, I think it's Basha Electrica, which is electric berry. And this green, gray, I have no idea. It could be, it could be a different batch of Pearl 10 that came out green. This happens with Malabrigo sometimes, or it, it reminds me a lot of their Alcaucil colorway. I don't know. Uh, now that I'm standing up, you can appreciate the slip stitches uh, in the color changes, and then in some colors, I added some pearl ridges for texture to make it a bit more crazy and spontaneous. The problem is that I don't know that I can write that down as a pattern. Anyway, today I decided to wear this for the journal. I thought um, this has been uh, sitting in a box for a year and a half waiting for me to write it down and I was trying to keep it from ruining uh, with wear so that I could photograph it and I never photographed it. So I think I have decided this pattern is not going to happen. Uh, but I've been, I've been thinking a lot about coats lately. If you know my style, you know that I love coats. I love any kind of coats, knitted coats and just coats, cardigan coats, <laughs> coatigans. And yes, so I'm thinking of making a single color version of this. And I was looking at my stash and I don't have a lot of bulky weight in my stash. 
I think that people are, are a bit scared of knitting with bulky weight and I don't know if it's something that people are still interested in knitting with. So another thing that I would really love to hear from you is not only whether you're interested in the sock knit along, but also how do you feel about super bulky yarns? Have you used them in the past? Um, did you have a good experience with it or was it a bit frustrating? Bulky yarns can be an expensive project because they are not necessarily cheaper than uh, lighter weight yarns and then you, you need probably about a kilo of yarn to make a garment and yes, so I'm interesting I'm interested in hearing your thoughts about it and in my experience I have always enjoyed a lot working with them. I, ha I enjoyed the fact that I can have a coat ready in a couple of weeks and I enjoyed the gauges of five or six inches to <laughs> five or six stitches to four inches. Um, for me as a designer is a lot more difficult than you think to design with bulky weight yarns because just one stitch um, extra can make a lot of difference and therefore making things to fit um, it's harder. But I have designed a coat called Super Bulky Grandpa and I think it works really well. So I'm considering um, making another super super bulky or chunky chunky weight um, coat. Sorry about all the arms. I'm super slow today. <laughs> so I found in my stash uh, this yarn. This is not super bulky. It's a chunky weight yarn. So it's a uh, good in between. And I have one kilo of this, I have 10 skeins, and I thought it could make a really cute coat again. And yes, so I only have this red color, I think it would look very nice. And I'm thinking of something with the uh, same style, like a uh, color and pockets, of course. This one doesn't have any pockets, but I would make pockets for this red one. So this is also Malabrigo, because I thought, okay, I'm still owing Malabrigo <laughs> sort of a design with their yarn. Mm, so this is their Mecha. And uh, Mecha is a single ply, pure merino superwash wool, and it comes in 100 gram skeins and the put up is 120 meters per skein and recommended needles are 6 to 8 millimeters and the gauge the recommended gauge is 11 stitches to 4 inches so that's a very attractive gauge um, you, you could make really good progress in a very short time and the colorway that I have is called cereza, which means cherry. So that's something that I've been considering working with and it might jump on my needles soon. Um, I think red went through the same pro process that the purple did in my stash. There was a time when I used to have a lot of reds and purples and blues and then I said enough of red, purple and blue, I'm going to do all yellow, brown and grey, I think, <laughs> and pink. And now I'm coming back to my original flavors, I think, and I'm trying to go back to the things that I was drawn to. Um, just because I like the way they looked and not so much because I'm worried about whether it's a fashionable color or not, at least at this time. 
And then I've only been, I've been meeting a lot, you guys, but I still have another week to go um, meeting for work. So I haven't been finishing any projects that I can show or, and I haven't cast on any new projects really, but I have a small project that I can share with you that's keeping me company while I meet on other things. And it's a pair of scrappy socks. Oh, look, they kind of match my, <laughs> my coat. That's funny. Um, so I'm using several leftovers that I had in my leftover bin. And I really like this color combination, the way it turned out. So here are all my um, leftovers that I'm using for my sock. The, um, this mauve color is by Suburban Stitcher. And I already started my second sock to complete the pair. And then I think I told you guys this last week, but I'm going to go through them again. I think this is um, the Uncommon Thread H Merlot. And then the third color is by Life in the Long Grass. And it's called Beach Grass. It's the same yarn that I use for my beach grass socks. And this is also Life in the Long Grass in the Artifact colorway. It's this one here. And then uh, this is Ancient Arts uh, in their, I think it's their Puppy series. And this is the colorway Dalmatian. Let's see it here. And then I used one of my skeins of uh, one of my leftovers from uh, my fading point. I think it's a middle color. I don't remember the name. Sorry. But it's uh, part of my La Vienne Me uh, La Belle Epoque set. And then finally, I have to grab this. The tip of my sock was made with a skein, skein yarn shimmer in the crema or cream colorway. Yes, so I started my socks with a one by one rib. And then I switched to two by one. So it's two knit stitches and one per stitch in between. And I'm using 60, 60 stitches. And another thing that I've been, and honestly, I've been daydreaming about finishing all my commissions and all my pending work and designing everything. <laughs> And writing books and collections and single patterns and it's not happening I'm not finishing my commissions anytime soon but another thing that I considered was writing down a small collection of patterns for these basic um, things that you can need with leftovers like uh, scrappy socks and scrappy hat and scrappy mittens or how to combine scraps with a single skein of yarn and then achieve like a bigger project using all of your leftovers and it wouldn't it wouldn't be a collection full of original ideas but i i think that a lot of knitters would find it useful to have reference like okay my leftover bin is so full, what can I make? And then have a couple of ideas that are not as time consuming as a scrappy 
blanket, <laughs> which is something I tried to do several times and I never, I never could. I could never do it. It's it's too much work for me. Too much time. So that's the only thing that I've been <clears throat> working on really. I haven't been working on my Elton cardigan, my yellow cardigan at all, um, sadly. But who knows, perhaps in a couple of weeks I will be done and we will have a lot of castons. I also wanted to talk about the traveling that I have to do in the upcoming months and um, I'm very excited. So in 10 days, in a week, not 10, in just one week, my family and I are taking our annual winter holiday trip. We're going to the mountains to ski. Um, for those who don't know, Argentina, it's the southernmost country together with Chile <clears throat> in South America. And Chile and Argentina share the Andes mountain range. So you can find Chile on the uh, west side of the Andes and Argentina on the east side of the Andes. So every year my family and I drive from the Atlantic coast to the Andes which is a 1,600 kilometers drive. We have to split that in two days. And then we spend a week skiing uh, in one of the ski resorts up in the mountains, which is, which is really beautiful. And <clears throat> I enjoy spending that time with my family and uh, my brother usually comes with us and it's a really great time to connect with him every year and really good friends also come along. So I'm looking forward to that time. This year, sadly, my husband probably won't be able to ski with us due to his foot injury. So that also means that I will have to be the courageous mom and take my kids up the mountain and into the harder slopes and that's all right i suppose i can do that but i will miss my husband very much he will stay um at the bottom of the mountain and probably will cook for us and miss us and then um so that's in july and then on july 31st my friend Ale and I are joining a group of travelers who come to Argentina with a company called Behind the Scenes Adventures. And they come to travel around Uruguay and Argentina for two weeks. And um, during the last days, I think, of their stay, they go to an estancia or a ranch here in the outskirts of Buenos Aires. And Ali and I joined them for two days and two nights. And we basically just hang out there and tell stories. And we share good food and we knit together. I have designed a pattern for this group of travelers to knit while we are together. And it's a short pattern that I showed you in one of the first journals that I recorded, but it should be ready to publish after that event is over. So that's at the end of July, beginning of August. And then, um, I'm super excited about this. At uh, the end of September, I I'm going to go to Knit City. It's a knitting festival in Vancouver, Canada. And I have the honor to be a teacher there. And uh, for me, it's a dream come true to be able to travel to all these places because of my work. It's a really long way to go to teach a class. And 
I was very honored that my classes filled up very quickly. So I look forward to seeing a lot of you possibly there. If you're not taking a class, perhaps you're coming to the lecture. Vera, my friend Vera and I will be, oops, sorry, my husband's calling. I have to call you, I have had to come back. Sorry, my husband um, had his doctor appointment uh, today, this morning, and he was going to call me to give me the news. And it's great news because the doctor just said that he looks fine. The injury looks fine. He's obviously taken care of his foot very well and he gave Charlie permission to ski. So <laughs> that means that this holiday is going to be a lot better than I told you maybe 10 minutes ago. So that's great news. Anyway, I was telling you about Canada. I'm going to be teaching there and also I'm going to be doing the Friday night lecture together with my friend Vera Valimaki. We're going to be telling the story about our interpretations books and how Interpretations 5 came to life. And yes, so I'm hoping to see you guys there and after that, after working, Vera and I are going to do a two families trip. So my boys and Charlie are coming to Canada on Saturday evening and Vera's family is arriving shortly after. And we're going to travel together for two weeks and we're going to do a lot of fun stuff. Last week I posted to Instagram and to Facebook that I, I'm in charge of all the travel plans because uh, traveling is my favorite thing to do in the world. And I posted that I was planning our road trip and that I was deciding which way to go and which hotels to stay at and which places to visit. and. People were so fabulous. We received tons of comments and suggestions and advice. And every time I travel, I do that. Every time I travel, I ask my meeting community for travel recommendations and advice. And every time I've been able to uh, organize the most amazing trips, thanks to you. So I wanted to give everyone a shout out, everyone who took the time to leave a comment and a recommendation in that thread. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I, I really cannot tell you how much it means and how much attention I give to all of your comments and I look into everyone's recommendation. So also if you have considered traveling around the west side of Canada, we're going to do Vancouver to Calgary uh, through the Rocky Mountains and then we're going to do a little bit of Toronto area too. If you have considered going to Canada or um, visit those places, take a look at my post on Instagram uh, from a week ago because people really left the most incredible advice and there, there are a lot of really great tips there. And yes, and lastly, this year I'm going to also go to Barcelona in November to teach at Barcelona NEAT Festival. And that's going to be November 17 and 18. And this time it's, go it's going to be only work. I'm going alone and I'm going to do four courses and um, also Vera and I are going to photo shoot a book and then I'm going to do a short visit to Berlin to visit my friends Marion and Steffi and then I'm going to come home. Um, sadly all the classes for this year are sold out and the lecture too in Canada and uh, I don't have a lot of events that I will be teaching at next year. I'm only going to be teaching um, two events. Uh, one of them is in Sarasota, Florida in May and that event is also 
sold out and the other event I think it hasn't been up for sale it's a retreat in Portland Maine organized by Vogue Knitting Live and I think that that event hasn't come up for sale yet so that would be the only event that you can take classes with me in the future and I'm going to take a break from teaching classes after that I have talked about this but I'm mentioning it mentioning it again because I'm a bit uh, burnt out from traveling for work and I want to have a bit more time and energy to travel for fun and perhaps enjoy um, just visiting with friends and maybe going to knitting events but as a participant and not have having to wake up early to study classes and not being so nervous because I get super nervous every time I have to teach a course I'm always wondering if people are getting what they came for and whether they're actually enjoying their classes with me whether they think that the time and money they invested are worth it so yes I think that I'm going to take a break and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be missing teaching classes and traveling for work pretty soon so I I can say that I'm going to be teaching again in the future but right now I'm going to take a break not from traveling just for from teaching yes so I think that's all I have to say about knitting today so I, if you're not interested in seeing my sewing projects then thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next journal and if you're interested in uh, learning what I've been sewing this week, just stay with me. I have sewed first a uh, pair of pyjama pants for my boy, for Nano. Uh, but I was looking for them and I couldn't find them and it turns out that they are um, hanging in the clothes line outside so they are a bit wet and wrinkled so I couldn't show them to you uh, Nano, I think he lost the plaid pyjama pants that I made for him um, maybe, maybe two or three weeks ago I think he only wore them once or twice and I suspect that we left those in Uruguay which is very sad because I cannot find them anywhere so um, last week I was trying to um, I was trying my hand again at sewing a pair of pants that would fit me after trying the Merchant and Meals 101 trousers and having them too large and too wide and high-waisted for my taste I thought I could take the instructions from the same pattern and tweak the pattern pieces like cut the cut the pattern pieces based on a pair of trousers that I bought and that I owned and that I like so I tried to do that and try to modify the pieces that I had already cut for the larger trousers and I cut them I again made the made these uh, trousers with pockets and pocket linings and a waistband and it was very pretty with a faux um, zipper fly and then uh, it turned out probably about six inches too small which is why <laughs> why can't I do this I, I swear I was tracing the pattern on top of my trousers it didn't work at all but I told my son do you want to try them on because I could make a replacement pyjama with this and he said yes okay he tried them on and he liked them so I hemmed them to Nano's 
um, length and they became his replacement pyjama pants. They are not really suitable for pyjamas because they were made out of that uh, poplin fabric that I was using for my muslins. So they are not really warm enough. But he seems to be comfortable in those. They have an elastic waistband. So I told him, you lost your other ones. These are the ones you get. <laughs> I went fabric shopping yesterday and I wish I had purchased more plaid fabric. I only now realize that those trousers are really lost and that I should make him a warmer pair of pajama pants. Anyway, um, when I was first learning to sew, so several journals ago, I showed you a little project bag with leather handles that I had made with a bird with a fabric, with a bird, with print, with birds. And I told you that this fabric was in my stash. I had purchased it before learning how to sew and I didn't really know what to make with it. And then I had washed it with hot water in the washer and it became a lot more rustic and rugged and it was not shiny anymore. And I really liked it. I don't, I didn't think at the time that I could make things that I liked with the fabric, but I thought, okay, it's not that bad, so I'll keep it. And I used it to make this project bag, and a lot of people said, hey, I really like that fabric. So I started looking at the fabric with different eyes. Perhaps it's not so bad. Then um, I taught my friend Alma, my little friend Alma, to sew and we made a purse with that fabric, a handbag, um, with a, how do you say it, with a crossover, <laughs> a messenger type of bag. Um, for her, I showed, I didn't show that in the journal, but it's on my sewing Instagram. And and I thought that we would get like we would use up the remains of that fabric, but we didn't. And her mother said, "Oh, that's beautiful fabric," and I offered her to take it <laughs> from my hands so that I could say, "Okay, I've used it up." And I love using up fabric. I love using it all up because it makes me feel very resourceful. But she said, no, no, I can't take this one because it's too beautiful. I, I won't take it from you. So then it kept bugging me that I couldn't use up this fabric. So I thought, okay, I need to find a project to use up all this fabric. And I decided I was going to buy a pattern for a duffel bag. And I purchased, um, here it is, my duffel bag with the birdies. I purchased uh, this pattern from Pearl Soho. Um, it's a digital download so you have to uh, print. You only print the circles for the sides of the duffel and then the pattern gives you the measurements for the main piece and for the pocket piece. And then, of course, it gives you the right measurements to cut uh, this webbing. I used just regular white natural cotton webbing. And, you know, in Argentina, we have to buy a lot of things by bulk, in bulk. So I had some zippers that I had purchased for my brother's top kits. So I had some zippers left over. I probably would have bought a white background zipper, but it doesn't bother me at all that it's a black one. I, I, I still think it looks very nice. Um, so yes, and the pattern had instructions to add um, 
strap um, thingy <laughs> to make it longer or shorter, but I didn't have any of those in my stash. And I really wanted to finish the project. I didn't want to delay the finishing of it. I didn't want to keep working on it or leave it unfinished because I suspected that then I wouldn't get back to it soon enough. So I decided to just uh, to just sew it in place. I measured it. Um, and I and I just sewed it in the length that it would be comfortable for someone around my height or a bit taller. And I say a bit taller because this is for my friend Carson. Hello Carson, if you're looking. My friend Carson is going through a really hard time right now with her health and um, She's recovering from uh, an accident and I have been sending her my virtual hugs but I wanted to make something for her, thinking of her to send her some positive healing energy and I'm going to meet Carson when I go to Canada and I thought uh, I would make her a bag with the birdie fabric and then I thought my friend Carson brings a lot of stuff everywhere. I have traveled with Carson before and she's the kind of lady who brings two or three different knitting projects but then she also brings water and snacks for everyone and um, she's the one who, who drives so she has all the things she needs for the car and I don't know, she strikes me as a person who always brings a lot of stuff everywhere so I thought Carson would um, find a bigger bag more helpful or more useful than a smaller project bag. So I made Carson this uh, duffel bag for her knitting projects and I filled it up with yarn to test the capacity and you can fit a, a lot of skeins of yarn. So since Carson's going to Knit City, I thought this was also a good idea to, for her to bring when she goes yarn shopping in the marketplace. Yes, so that's for Soho's pattern and it's called the Weekender Duffel Bag. It's very easy, um, it's a very easy to make duffel. Um, it's not, I wanted to mention that it's not lined I would have probably preferred a lined bag pattern. This one is not lined, so you finish the inside of the bag with um, bias tape, like that. And you have to be, you have to be very tidy here in the zipper. I didn't want to use black thread here top stitching the zipper and it kind of bothered me that you could see the white stitches on top of the black zipper so I just painted those with a sharpie with a black sharpie that I got from my sharpie fairies you know who you are and yes and then Guess what? The birdie fabric was not over. I still had like a small piece left over. It wasn't a yard and it had I had cut into parts of it, but it was a reasonably sized piece. And I wondered <laughs> what can I make with this? I want to make something significant. I don't want to make just more plain um, project bags. So I decided I would start cutting pieces for another backpack. And if I had enough yarn, enough fabric to cut all the pieces, then I would make a backpack. And if I didn't have enough, if I couldn't cut all the pieces from those from that scrap then I would 
sort of put all those pieces together and make smaller bags with those pieces that I had cut. And turns out that I had just enough pieces scattered around to make another um, range backpack. So I made this backpack uh, already once. This is the second time that, I'm, that I use this pattern. Uh, I brought the first one to tell you um, about it, but the first one was made for my son, Sebi, for his birthday. And this one is made for a very special friend and I cannot say who she is or if I'm going to meet her because I want to surprise her but she probably will have seen this backpack eventually we'll see uh, but it's for a friend and I hope she likes it so the outside fabric is the birdie fabric I, this time I used the closure that the pattern indicates it's um, you have to pull the, this tab through uh, two D-rings, like that. This closure was not suitable for my son. He would have, it would have taken him too long to close the backpack and probably the backpack would have been open always. So my son's has a different closure, but this is the closure indicated in the pattern. And the backpack is lined with um, black linen. The straps uh, were made with the same black linen that I used for the lining. And I added a leather handle here at the top. And it's the first time that I tried, I thought, do you think my sewing machine can go through all these layers and leather? I have a regular sewing machine for your information. And it did. I killed it. <laughs> so this also means that I can now add leather handles to a lot of things that I didn't know how to attach my handles to. Uh, I did it slowly. I tried with like um, with my hand, not with my presser, not with my pedal. I was doing it by hand and I realized my machine was going through it very easily. I don't have a special needle or anything fancy. I just sewed through the handle and it looked fine. So that's it. And I reinforced the straps here a little bit. The pattern has an inside pocket, a slip pocket, but uh, this time I didn't do it because I I think Sebi doesn't use that pocket at all, so I decided I didn't want to waste time making the inside pocket. I don't have any fabric left I, I have a very small, very small little square that I have now moved to my bag of fabric scraps. So I'm pleased I used up, I used up all my birdie fabric. So this is, I, I don't think I mentioned, this is the range backpack by Noodlehead. I think she's Anna Graham. Uh, I loved this pattern. It's a bit of a... It's a lot of pieces and it's a lot of cutting and you have to interface everything which takes a very long time but the pattern is very well explained and you don't have to be an experienced sewist to make this. It's absolutely beginner friendly. So make one. I love it. And then, um, as I mentioned yesterday, I went fabric shopping and now my, my head is exploding. I want to sew everything, same as I want to knit everything. I want to sew everything. And I'm ready to cast on a few 
to, not to cast on, I'm ready to cut into a few new projects that I'm planning, but I have, uh, I had two tops that I had cut and I hadn't sewn, they were just tied with a knot and just lying around in my sewing um, box and I decided that I would sew the projects that I have already cut before cutting into new projects. So last night, after everyone had dinner, I sewed up this top. This is also a leftover fabric because not only I have my own leftovers to work with, when Ale makes something and she has a bit of fabric left over, she thinks that she can't make something for herself, so she brings her leftovers to me. And then I have to deal with her leftovers. Uh, so she brought this blue, navy blue linen. Um, I really like it. I think there's uh, probably some viscose in this fabric, uh, which gives the the garment a nice drape. Uh, it's navy blue, but it looks black in the screen, I think. And it has this nice diamond-shaped um, keyhole in the back. It has interfaced facings for the front and also for the back. Let me get this out of the hanger. It has an interface um, section here in the back too to give it structure and it has Japanese style sleeves like cap sleeves and it has an A-line shape. Oh, I need to iron this a bit better. It has an A-line shape and a bit of a rounded hem. So I'm going to show you the original pattern is within this book that I have shown you many times. I think I'm just working my way through all these patterns slowly. So the style that I made this time is style C1. And the model here in the book is also wearing a linen version but with a beautiful flowery print and I just used up the scrap that Ale left me and I had just barely enough to make one for my size. I think I used something like 80 centimeters and yes so it's very beautiful um, I, you know, I, I mentioned this before, but I'm trying out several top patterns to find the basic top that I like the best, so that when I purchase some fabric, I can have that top as reference. This is very a very nice pattern. I made it in no time, literally. Like, this took, this took only like three, four hours, which for me, it's no time, you guys. I don't know who can make a garment in less than that, but for me, it's really, really quick. The only thing that I changed is that I didn't do the button loop and the, I didn't do any button loops. I just sewed the ends together and sewed the button on top. I know it's very lazy, but this goes uh, over my head very easily and I didn't want to do the button looping. I didn't want to spend any time doing that. I think I, I'm just going to fake it like this. So yes, so those were my makes uh, for this week. I want to tell you also about Sevi's backpack. This is the range backpack that I made for Sebi uh, in May. Uh, it was for his 10th uh, birthday. So I wanted to give you guys an, uh, a review of my homemade 
wax fabric and how it's performing um, after a month of use. Sebi received this on June 4 and he hasn't been wearing the he hasn't been using this for school but he has been taking this to um, sleepovers and he took it uh, to our trip to Uruguay and he used it to carry his iPad and his jacket and anything that he needed with him. So the wax canvas is looking really nice. Um, it has acquired this more rugged look. Uh, it was a bit sticky uh, when I first, when I finished waxing the fabric, it was still a bit sticky. You could still feel it uh, in your hands a little bit, that wax, but now it has become this uh, water repellent fabric. Um, I'm very pleased. It's not rigid at all, but it has a lovely structure for bag making and like purses and backpacks and duffel bags. When I showed you uh, the, back, the finished backpack, we had placed a bucket, a bucket closure, uh, not a bucket, um, belt buckle closure. Uh, so you had to buckle it and Sebi was also struggling with that closure. Uh, it was taking him a bit more time than he wanted. He looked a bit frustrated. So um, I don't have yet a machine to install these snap closures. So we took this to the shoe shop repair, uh, to the shoe repair shop and they, for maybe one dollar, <laughs> they installed the snap closure for us um, like that so it looks it still looks cool I, I like the strap of leather I think it gives the bag a bit of a hipster handmade look but it's very easy for him to open and close like that and zippers are working great, no problem with this uh, so far. And yeah, so we had installed the, we, I had added some rivets to the hand handle. And when he took the backpack to one of his um, school, trips this side came out so you can see it pierced the fabric and it it just came came out so instead i sewed over i i took the backpack and i sewed over the handle now that i knew that my sewing machine could go over it and it it really looks a lot better than my attempt to install my own rivets which was a bit of a failure so so far the backpack has been performing super well um, my son is 10 years old and he loves it and my 11 soon to be 12 years old requested uh, one for him too which is a two thumbs up for any mother of boys. You know how hard it is to make something for a preteen. So the fact that my eldest uh, requested one for me is a very proud moment. And so yesterday I purchased, uh, he wants it to be royal blue, which is not a very hipster looking color, but I'm going with it because it's his favorite color. So I'm going to be making yet another one of these backpacks. Best money I spent in a pattern. And then yesterday I purchased some fabrics that I wanted to show you. I purchased these gray, uh, sort of like um, chambray fabric I 
should say that buying fabric here in Argentina is so cheap compared to anywhere else that I've been fabric shopping in the world. Um, it's, you get tempted to buy a lot of things that are so cheap, but then you, you, um, you, sometimes you buy things that are not something that you wouldn't necessarily wear. But so you have to be careful when you go to our fabric district because fabric can be so cheap that you want to buy everything. So this chambray is uh, about, I would say, something like $2.50 a meter. And it's not a sale price, that's the regular price. And I think I bought, I don't remember, but I think I bought three meters of this fabric. It's a bit heavier than I would like for a dress or a shirt, but I like it anyway. Yesterday I purchased a PDF pattern from Marilla Walker and I plan to make her Iska dress with this fabric. And there are two versions of the pattern. I'm going to add a link to the pattern. So let, let me see if I can find a photo of it to show you. Iska dress. Mm. Okay, let's see. Oh, it's with a C, not with a K. So it's spelled I S C A. Oh, here we have a good photo of it. This is Marilla and she's wearing the version that I want to make with the gray fabric. And uh, Google also shows me this version, which is very pretty. I don't know who the sewist is, but um, she looks very pretty in her Iska shirt dress. So this is what I would love to make now that I know how to make a buttonhole. We'll see. Um, so it's a bit lighter than the gray one in the photo, but I think it will work. I might have to add black buttons to make it a bit darker. And then this is so exciting. I saw this yellow fabric when I purchased the fabric to make the jacket for Alma and I thought oh that would make a beautiful coat but I didn't know if I would wear it I think I would um, and I didn't know if I was skilled enough to make a coat but then I made Alma's jacket and it turned out okay and she loved it. So I thought, okay, if I could make a jacket for Alma, then I can make a jacket for myself. So I went back yesterday and this was not as cheap as the dress fabric. So the dress fabric was about seven, eight dollars. Uh, this was more expensive, but I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. So I don't know what type of fabric this is. It looks like a coating wool blend, viscose, acrylic thing. Um, in the store they called it Paño Velour. I don't know if that's the name in English. And 
I wanted three meters and they said I should get less than that and they said two meters and I said three meters they said two I said three and then they said okay take 250 and now I'm kicking myself because most patterns that I'm looking at require three or more meters and I hate the employees there who don't want to sell me more fabric but I'll try to make it work with two and a half meters and then I purchased this uh, fabric for the lining it's like a satin but it definitely looks like a better quality than the one that I use for Alma's jacket it, it looks and feels heavier um, yes so this is how the two of them look together so this is going to be the inside of my jacket we'll see I haven't yet decided on a pattern I have a, a pear shape that means that I'm much smaller on top than on the bottom and all the jackets that I'm seeing have this cocoon shape or straight shape and I'm concerned about the sizing for those with my shape so I am not so sure what to do I'm not so sure what pattern to pick I was thinking more of uh, that something more like a peacoat would be more suitable for uh, this mm. fabric and my shape, but I don't know. I have considered the Oslo coat by Tesuti Fabrics, but then it looks like it comes, you have to either pick the size that comes from 6 to 10 or to from 12 to 16 I think and I am undecided whether I am a 10 or a 12 so I really don't know which one to buy which is kind of keeping me from buying that pattern and I have looked at some of the Burda patterns but I cannot buy the ones that come only in paper I have to buy something that's a PDF file so I don't know if you have really nice coats or if they don't have to be long coats, they could be like a long jacket too. Um, recommendations, please send them my way. Mm, I think I'm going to sit on this fabric for a couple of days before cutting into it, so it would be great to hear any recommendations that you might have for me. Um, and the total cost for this coat was something like $40. Um, both for the uh, outer fabric, the main fabric and the lining, something like a bit under $40 for my size, which is great, I think, because a coat here costs probably over 200 clothes in Argentina are very expensive. So I'm excited to make myself a new coat. I only have one uh, wool, wool coat and then I have like puffer jackets so this is something that I am really interested in having. So yay for coat making! And I think that's it for sewing this week too. I hope you guys enjoyed the the journal. I think the light is a bit better today that I'm recording during the morning, but I have also considered um, upgrading my podcasting equipment, so perhaps I should consider buying a camera for podcasting. We'll see. Anyway, thank you so much for watching me today and I hope to see you next week and don't forget about my questions what do you think about a sock needle alone and bulky yarn bye